And uh, the cool thing about these mid-range decks is it's a very interesting mirror match when they go against one another. There's a lot of cards in the main and even the sideboard that has a lot of similarity. So it's, it's very evenly balanced. Um, but for the mirror match, I believe you're going to see a lot of interesting uh, cards come into play. So being one of the premier decks in the format, Red Black Mid Range is a very jack of all trades style of deck, and it's also a deck that can just go back and forth and be very versatile in what needs to be. So uh, we have a creature on Chase's field. Uh, Jose is going to Fatal Push and remove it from the battlefield. All right, so we're gonna get Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We're gonna get our token. So right now we have two Shaman tokens on the field swinging. Chase is at eight right now. Unfortunately, he's on the back foot and Jose has a pretty distinctive board advantage right now. So we're going to fatal push the token from Chase. This is another this is another really interesting thing about the the mirror match for red black mid range. It's very give and take. Um, you have a lot of punch, punch, punch. Um, you have one opponent trying to provide threats, and the other option, the other player has to either have something in his hand to deal with those threats immediately, or it's gonna be some pain. So right now, uh, looks like we have uh, Chase at eight, uh, Jose at 17. He's just took the first uh, set of damage. Now, here's a card that we have coming into play, extremely strong on Chase's side, Shouldered the Apocalypse. Shouldered the Apocalypse is just so good. Um, like, you know, a lot of people were, were very hard on this card, Shouldered the Apocalypse. And, I mean, it's just everywhere. Um, for our viewers who might not know what this card is, uh, Shielder the Apocalypse, it is recently from Dominaria United, the most recent set that came out. It is uh, two colorless and two black for a 4-5 legendary creature Phyrexian Praetor. It's Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, gain two life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. That's... That's pretty, that's pretty strong. That's, that's pretty strong. Um, so, you, you know, already on the, on the very ground floor, okay, you have two colorless, two black for a four or five creature, right? It's four or five. It's got a little, a little thicker butt than the average creature. It can take more damage. It can, it can withstand more of a beating. So that's already good. It's a death touch creature. So even if you have to block a, a larger creature, let's say you have to block a 13-13 with your 4-5, well, it's death touch. Your creature's dead. It's gone. And there's, and there's so much incremental advantage. Whenever you draw a card, which happens every turn, you're going to gain two life. When an opponent draws a card, they're going to lose two life. If, they, if Jose can't get rid of this creature, it's, it's inevitable. It, it's just going to happen. And it's such a larger converted mana cost to cast it. And it's a larger creature in regards to its stats. It's going to be extremely hard to remove that card. All right, so we have Crocs on the field. We're going to get another token. And putting Jose down to 15. It'll be Chase's turn. He's already up to 10. Now, I will say, there are a number of removal pieces that Jose can use um, to try to move around this creature, but what he's going to have to do really is try to apply some pressure, try to push his board state 
over shielded. Like, realistically, he can only block so many things. Okay. So we're going to have the Graveyard Trespasser block the token. Chase is looking through his hand, see what options he has. Now, the Croxa on Jose's side of the battlefield, that is, that is a card that is causing some problems. It is a 6-6. Six, six. Even though it will die, uh, blocking Shieldred because of the death touch, it is something he can just escape back. Uh, here comes Jose with another Fable of the Mirror Breaker, creating an additional token. He's also going to cast the uh, Stomp side of... Bone Crusher Giant. When Throne of Eldraine first came out, I gotta say, I love the adventure cards. I, I, I love cards that have a lot of different modes, a lot of different versatility. Um, it's really strong. Um, there's so many unique ways to interact and play. So after blocks, there will be an additional stomp, um, getting rid of Croxa. Which, the, also, the instant side of Croxa is a great way to push through additional damage. It makes combat math pretty problematic. You, you think that you know everything. Oh, well, here we are. Uh, they're going to they're gonna just throw a couple extra burn spells and kill my guy I thought could survive. That's the thing. So, like, that's the other thing about uh, red-black midrange. You know, depending what the players draw, you have to decide, especially in mirror matches where you guys are essentially playing the same thing, you really have to prioritize your threats. You have to prioritize, like, every in a mirror match, you know what your opponent has because it's the same thing you're running. Uh, both weapons are equally matched. It's all, it's all on the user all of that weight and all of that responsibility is on the user's shoulders uh, all right uh thank you so much chat uh, uh we will definitely try to um fix that for you guys um yeah uh it is a little bit harder uh, we will try to work on cleaning all this up um it very well could be just a sizing issue um it also could be uh maybe some uh issues with the camera setup um unfortunately uh, uh zach uh the owner here at out of the box gaming and myself uh we're sort of just <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm I'm really I'm really trying. Uh, unfortunately, I was running uh, just dreadfully behind this morning, uh, trying to get everyone what they need for the for the match today for the event. That uh, that's sort of the responsibility you have when you're everyone's favorite favorite neighborhood broker for this stuff. Um, so already being down so low, Shieldred has been able to just like completely get Chase out of the hole. And now the life totals are pretty evenly matched. Um, Chase also has double graveyard trespassers out, which is going to start uh, whittling away the graveyard that Jose can use to try to bring Croxa back from the graveyard. So we have two Fable of the Mirror Breakers, we have one token, and we have a Trespasser on Jose's side. We have Shieldred the Apocalypse and two Graveyard Trespassers um, on Chase's side. Let's see what he draws into. Um, also, chat, uh, thank you again. Um, being that we're sort of uh, many men down on today's ship, we might not be able to uh, work on the stream view um, today um, at any point that we have the ability to. We will try to adjust a few things and uh, clean it up a little bit better for you guys. We apologize for any inconvenience. Um, 
also um i'm gonna be here all day uh doing trades doing commentary doing interviews anyone who wants to swing by to out of the box gaming please do um very fun place we, we have something for literally everyone even if you just want to come in and play galaga there's arcade cabinets uh, miniature gaming card games of every variety board games of every variety um anything that your nerdy gamer inner child would desire we have it for you down here at out of the box um 36 west main thomasville um oh so we have bone crusher giant coming off of chase aside the the coolest thing about bone crusher and stomp is with the stomp you it's just an extra shock it's just an extra two damage to anything including players or creatures and later on when you have the mana you just got a big beefy four three boy it, it's a good time um so i mean in in jose he has he has a bone crusher giant himself so we're gonna swing in with the fable of the mirror breaker enchantment Making three guys. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That, you know, it's so funny that you have these extended formats and you have these wild creatures and wild cards and wild combos it's very funny for eternal formats they're not really eternal anymore anymore they're really not um every set every every new iteration of the deck is either changed or completely outclassed or completely created every time a set comes out um so very recently um in pioneer in particular um with neon dynasty kamigawa there are so many new cards that have just pushed a lot of different archetypes to the fore. Um, Grease Fang Okiba Boss out of Neon Dynasty created its own archetype. There are Grease Fang decks in Modern. There are Grease Fang decks in Pioneer. There are tons of different color variations. Um, I've seen a lot of my friends um, use uh, white, blue, black um and i the more predominant version that we see now that the format is sort of settled in place and become a staple is um um uh, abzan or black white green mana uh, you have access to so many more stronger creatures so uh we're gonna go to match two uh unfortunately you just you just can't keep shielder down um, that card is just too good. Um, so, uh, now here comes the part of the show where sideboarding is going to be so essential. Um, you know, you only have 15 cards in your sideboard to switch in and out for, uh, an opponent. And, you know, it comes into play. What are you going to do against a mirror match? Right? Are you going to bring in specific silver bullets that you know will like just cut your opponent off at the knees? Or do you try to just run it back? Do you just try to run your original 60 in the hopes and in the event that your opponent has over-sideboarded or over-committed and put too many off synergy cards in the deck where it just it hurts itself uh sideboarding uh, ironically sideboarding sideboarded games are typically you know two-thirds of every gameplay you encounter right like you know you always play a best of three games even playing with your friends you know even goal fishing or competing for event you always want to try to play the sideboarded games to make sure that what am I doing? Am I doing this correctly against this matchup? Did I miss this card in the sideboard? You know, 
I personally have sideboarded horrendously multiple times. You know, I why did you put this in? It doesn't even work against this this deck that you put it in against. I'm like, I you know what? I I I've been screwed up. There you are. Uh, it's a uh, very it's very interesting uh, to see all of the little unique interactions and you know little nuances uh, sideboarding is not easy um there's a lot of nuance to it uh there there is a little there's a little bit of poker there's a little bit of 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 just trying to figure out what your opponent has and what they're going to do and try to uh anticipate those kind of things um i know for a fact that um Abzan, uh, or I'm sorry, not Abzan, uh, Rakdos Midrange, uh, you do have additional removal, uh, Extinction Advent, Duresses, Braids, Kolagon's Command, Rending Volley. Uh, one card that could work very well would be Unlicensed Terse, because it has the ability to eat up your opponent's graveyard. It has the ability to, to uh, for example, if I play an unlicensed hearse, I just start eating the cards out of Jose's graveyard that he needs to play Croxa. Uh, that is the one main difference between Chase and um, Jose's deck. Um, Jose is running uh, Croxa, uh, Titan of Death's Hunger. Uh, if I'm not mistaken... I'm not sure. So, uh, let me double check. Let me check this out. So uh, we got a we got a pretty plain board state right now. Uh, two lands to chase. Uh, one land to Jose. Let me see. You know what? Actually, uh, Chase is also running Crocs for the Titan of Death's Hunger. So. This is almost a mirror setup of one another. Um, yeah, this is going to be a very, very, very interesting matchup. Okay, so we already have Blood Tide Harvester. So, oh, fatal push, good blocks, and back to an even board state. That's what happens when you get into a very removal heavy, a very removal heavy uh, matchup. Things just go off the rails pretty quickly. So, all right, we have Graveyard Trespass. Removing Fatal Push from the Graveyard. That's another, that's another very interesting, that's another very interesting thing. You have, you have essentially these decks that, that work off of their graveyard, uh, being able to regenerate uh, value from the graveyard. And then at the same time, you have the, the, the main deck cards and the sideboard cards, Graveyard Trespasser, Unlicensed Hearse, all of these, all of these things who end up actually washing out each other's graveyard and, and hurting each other's graveyard. So it's both of them are trying to throw punches and stall each other at the same time. Uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, so we're looking at a, okay, and that'd be an Invoke Despair. Didn't we have Graveyard Trespasser? So right now with, uh, Graveyard Trespasser coming in, swinging in. 
That puts uh, Chase down to seven, Jose at 21. This is a pretty mean matchup, not going to lie. So, oh, and there is one of my personal favorite cards, uh, one of my absolute personal favorites. Uh, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, going up to five. Uh, Chase is going to play a Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker um, just for giggles. So good. I love those cards so good. That's it. And I believe that's Jose taking it from Chase.